Because what I see when I travel is an entire generation of people, man. And I see it in this room. Like, I got it, man. You don't have to tell me. I'm not asking you to tell me your whole situation, but I see it because I've seen it over and over again. People who are so trapped and so scared and so deeply ingrained that we, can't, we don't know what to do. And so after Gemma said that to me, she took me, we went back and this fella came up and we were talking and he said something to me about this bend in the river that I'd never heard before. He said, there's a percentage of people, Joe, you can see the other side. He said, there's a percentage of people who got to the water. The water was washing over their feet. And he said, the people would get there and they'd see they were 100 yards from freedom. Their past life was behind them. And this man was a historian. And he said, there's a small percentage, but there is a percentage, maybe even a larger percentage, of folks who got there, got near the water, the water's washing over their feet. And because they were afraid, Afraid, they chose to go back to their life because it was too hard and too scary to step into it. Because they didn't know, because as soon as you crossed that river and got to Pastor Rankin's house, you changed clothes, you changed who you were, and you kept going because you had to keep running all the way to Canada. And he said a lot of people, they couldn't handle that kind of a move in their life. So what they do is they get there and they think, well, it's, at least I know that life. At least that's safe in some ways. And I remember coming out and standing right there on that wooden part and tears rolled down my cheeks. Like imagine today if one of you gets all the way to the edge and God the Father says, I want to touch your heart. I want to heal your brokenness. And you go, I can't. Like I've already got a reputation, Joe. You don't know who I am. I got this, I got that in my life and you run back to your past. So I want to pray with you for a few minutes. And I'm going to ask you to, to pray in the Spirit that God can do anything. Luke chapter 1 verse 37 says, nothing is impossible for God. And I'm going to ask you to consider the fact that in Isaiah 61, that it says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to set captives free. Because see, what happens is we've taken our, our almost this, this enslavement of sin and of, of, of all the things that Dana listed and that Dom talked about, and we have kind of walking through life. Some of us were even bent over. We can barely stand up because we're carrying it at 15 or 16 years old. And all I'm going to say to you is God desires freedom for you.